Hi everyone, Rebecca Matter here. Thank you so much for joining me for today's Inside ADBI. I am super excited. If you can't tell, you are in for such a treat today. If you have been around ADBI for the last few months, you might have heard us talking about something that McKinsey and Company named The Leap. And basically, this is where the rate of people coming online to shop has accelerated in a huge way. What would normally have taken 10 years took 90 days as a result of the pandemic. So what that means is there are more people shopping online right now than in the history of mankind, which spells huge opportunity, right, for companies of all sizes and why businesses right now everywhere are scrambling left and right to keep up and take full advantage. What do they need? They need content, lots and lots of content, which means as a writer, you're in a position to win big in the coming months and years. There's a ton of opportunity on the table right now if you know what it is, you know where to find it, and you know how to seize it. And that's why today I'm bringing on our very special guest, my friend, colleague, and the expert behind ADBI's content specialist certification, Russ Henneberry. He's one of the top digital marketing experts in the world, having literally co-wrote the book on the topic. He's worked with major brands like Digital Marketer, Crazy Egg, and Salesforce.com, and he's here today to share with you how you can quickly take advantage of the massive and still growing demand for skilled content writers. Welcome, Russ. How's it going? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to talk about some content. I know, right? And it's funny because we talked about this a few months ago. And it just gets more and more exciting. Like I thought it was exciting then because of this whole leap phenomenon, but now it's just like the snowball just keeps rolling and getting bigger and bigger. So what the heck can you take it from the top? Like what is going on in digital marketing and what is creating this? If you can just really teach what's actually happening and why there's such a need, a need for skilled content writers right now. Well, there's a few things that are coming to an intersection right now that uh, one of which you've mentioned here, which is that COVID and, and all of its repercussions have caused everybody to have to move online. It, it's actually quite staggering. I remember the first time I heard the statistic about how much sales are still happening in retail and then how many are happening online. You know, just a few years ago, you know, the, the statistics were kind of shocking. You kind of assume that there's so much more happening online, but what you see is that there is so much growth available over in digital because there's still so much happening over on the retail side. And what happened was when COVID occurred, we had all these physical locations having to close. It was you know, kind of scary to go out. And so everybody's moving online and people that weren't buying online are now buying online. People that were buying online are buying more online. And what it's caused is, you know, this massive opportunity to, you know, be in digital marketing because these people need content. Um, because, you know, I describe content as the fundamental building block of the internet. It's what we, if we're not speaking to each other, we are usually consuming content or buying something, right? So we're either watching video or we're reading an article or we're listening to a podcast all of which are words, all of which is communication, and all of which we need really smart uh, people that can write content and create content that that uh, is very desperately needed by every business. Like we're not talking about one uh, vertical or niche of business. We're talking about every business needs content. And as you know, all of the dollars start moving over online. Um, you know, you mentioned, I think you said, you know, something that was supposed to take five years or whatever it was, yeah. this happened 10 years, <laughs> you know, pr the pr what they projected to happen in, in the next 10 years happened much quicker in like 90 days period of time because of, you know, the pandemic. So yeah, there's a huge opportunity here in, in digital marketing and in particular in content marketing right now. And just to put that in perspective, guys, so we all buy stuff, right? Like look around, you buy stuff on a regular basis. So what Russ is saying is such a large percentage was still being done in retail, like mind boggling. I would have thought much more would have been done online, but it was really small. I can actually pull the setup. I want to say it was 3.5 over, I'll find it, but it's super small compared to the retail side of things. 
it's not like people are just buying more stuff now. It's that it shifted. So it shifted from the retail space to the digital space. So now any company who's selling online has all this opportunity on the digital side, on the e-commerce side of things to sell those products and services. In order to do that though, they need content. And so Russ, can you talk a little bit, when we say content, what does that mean? I know we're gonna look at some specific examples a little bit later, but just at a really top basic level for somebody who's brand new and is like, great, what the heck is content? Can you explain what that is and the fact just to illustrate how all companies need this, these types of things from writers. Yeah, it takes many, many forms, right? We, we, we are consuming content all the time online. Um, so it can take the form of really four different sort of vehicles. It could be text, it could be audio, it could be video, or it could be image-based content. But let's just look at text, right? So text you can have everything from blog posts to case studies to white papers to something that we call a lead magnet uh, that can be written, um, product pages, sales pages, uh, support pages, FAQ pages. All of this is content. And we are always, you know, at, at very, various times during the day, I mean, think about your own behavior. Um, when you get online, you're typically interacting with some form of content. And that's the word that that's being used today in, in the digital world is content. So it, it, it's literally anything that we are interacting with online that is short of communicating with each other or buying something, you know, the actual act of buying something, we're probably interacting with some kind of content. It could be a social media post, you know, something that you're reading on Facebook or LinkedIn, right? That's, that's content that was written by a writer, right? And so, um, yeah, that's, I mean, content, it's kind of hard to see because it's everywhere. It's kind of like asking the fish to to point at the water, right? It's like, well, <laughs> what's water? Like, it's like water is what you're in. It's everywhere. And content is everywhere online. It's, it's what we interact with. And that's why I call it the fundamental building block of the internet. Um, and that's why there's so much that's needed because, you know, we constantly need more content produced. Let's look at a few examples in a minute. I'm actually going to pop this up real quick, hopefully, if I can do this. So this is just to illustrate, guys, like how fast. When we talk about 90 days, that's what e-commerce looked like. From 2009, it was chugging along, it was chugging along, it was chugging along, and boom, everybody shifted online. So now everybody who was going to the stores to buy razors is buying razors online. They're buying dog food. They're buying dog food online. They're buying services in person. They're buying them online. They're buying hair cutting kits to buy at home. And the thing is, it's not shifting back. So it's what was interesting to me when I first read this was like, oh, everything moved to e-commerce. Well, that makes sense. We're all locked down, but the world is opening back up. Let's all go back out to the retail stores. But that's not the case, right, Russ? It's kind of created a new way of being that's pretty much going to continue. Yeah, talking? I mean, new, new patterns have developed in the consu- on the consumer side, and then new systems and processes have been put in place by the businesses. So this isn't going away. No, it's 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 a you know a permanent shift that we will look at on the graph of you know this kind of a graph, and we'll say what was that big giant spike? Yeah. And it's like, well, that was that was the pandemic, and it and it changed things very very quickly. And um, we will look back on this as a time that sort of amplified the speed to which the internet was, was becoming a part of our lives. I mean, I think you can look at your own behavior and notice just how much more we all relied on the internet to connect us all during the pandemic. And it, it, you know, extends out into our buying habits and our buying patterns. And yeah, this isn't going away. This is, this is a permanent shift. We, we lost a lot of businesses out there during the pandemic that couldn't make the jump. Right. But other, the, the rest of them, you can be rest assured that they've put in new processes updated their marketing strategy, everything has changed to understand that digital is first, all right, rather than in-person and retail. Um, And uh, so, yeah, this is a permanent change in my estimation, yeah. And so just again, to illustrate that, if you guys think about marketing dollars, if I'm a company and I have so much to spend in marketing, last year, all of my in-person channels shut down. So I had to shift the marketing dollars. Otherwise, I failed. I have a business to run. If I don't bring in new customers, if I don't maintain current customers, 
that's it. I'm out. <laughs> so I had to shift my marketing dollars to digital. The wonderful thing about it is that Russ has been in digital marketing for so long, we both would have guessed it's going to work better. It's going to be more cost effective for you. If you can make it work online, it's going to be better for your company. It's going to be better for your profitability, return on investment on those marketing dollars. We were right. It did work better. Now, do you think that they're going to move those marketing dollars back over into other channels? Or are they going to keep them in a the thing that's working better for them now where all the buyers happen to be? Obviously, they're going to keep those marketing dollars. So Russ, let's just stay here for one second at the just kind of opportunity. Make sure, because what I really want is not only to show or to teach our writers what the opportunity is, but to get them very comfortable in understanding and talking about it. So this other one, I wanted to talk about this really quick. This is kind of what we were talking about. It's now become part of our shopping DNA, if you will, of how we do things. And so what this is basically saying, if you could talk a little bit about this, is that it's opened up our mindset for shopping too, right? Like now I don't just go buy the thing I've always bought. I'm online. So explain how that part of content and digital marketing works. Because now anyone can get to me. It's not just my store. When I go to the store, they have these products. They're going to sell me these products. But what happens in digital marketing? Can you kind of, again, take us back a little bit and explain I'm a user online. What can happen with all the other brands out there that I might not have ever come in contact with? Well, people love to buy things like we, we, and we need to buy things. Um, and what we want to do is we want to make an informed buying decision, right? So we want to make sure that when we purchase something, we're getting a good deal. We're getting the thing that's going to meet our needs, our solution. And because we have access to the internet, we are able to do the research right here from our chair. We can go inside many stores all at one time. We don't have to, you know, you remember uh, standing in, you know, back in the day, you might be standing in Target or something like that, some department store. And now you're, you're in Target. Like you have what they have to offer to you here and that's it. Well, today that research starts online and, and usually now ends online as we've seen before where that, that purchase even happens online. But our desire to get it to make an, a, an informed buying decision, we go out, we search and we crawl around and we, we do our research. You know, people show up to the to on a car lot these days and they they know more than uh, ever before about the car that they want and why they want it and that it's going to meet their needs. You know, people research the clothes they want to buy. They look they look at the backstory of companies. Um, Google calls this the zero moment of truth. It's the time at which somebody goes online to investigate your brands, your products, your, your business. And what are we interacting with when we are trying to make that informed uh, buying decision? When I want to know whether I should buy this or this, I'm in, going to need to interact with content. And that content needs to be created by a writer. Um, and that's, again, that's why there's so much demand right now for writers is that we need we need this content in order to help our customers make informed buying decisions because the worst thing that can happen when they go to research you is that they find nothing right so let's say let's say you are a REI who sells mountain biking equipment and we're going to look at an example of this in a second but somebody's going out there, they're trying to figure out what do they need in order to become a mountain biker? They want to become a mountain biker. What do they need to do that? Well, they're going to interact with content around the web, whether REI created it or not, right? If REI creates nothing, then obviously they're not going to be able to interact with REI's content about what you need to be a mountain biker. But if REI does create something that can help somebody understand what they need to be an, a mountain biker, and how to compare this helmet against that helmet and all that stuff. They can pick up sales from that, right? And that's why these companies, every company wants content because people are out there doing their research and they are interacting with content and they need writers to do it. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. And actually for my copywriters who are also on this webinar, what is blowing my mind now is I've been so lasered in on the content side, the persuasive side of things, targeting people who are doing research about problem solutions products are looking for, 
where all my copywriters at? Because if you just heard what Russ said, research starts online and now the purchase ends online as well. So I'm guessing that the demand for content is like this. And so will the demand for copy because guess what happens? They get research, 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 and then it tips. And now I'm looking to buy something. And then my copywriters are going to be as in demand on the persuasive side of things. That's I didn't recognize that last time. Isn't that funny? This is our second time talking about this. And I didn't even see, I was so focused on content because it's so big, but the copy it's, it's kind of hand in hand. Well, it used to be people would do the research and then sometimes go into the retail environment and buy. But again, COVID has changed that behavior. Not completely. You know, people still go into retail stores and all that stuff. But what, what we're talking about is a massive shift where more and more trans, you're going to start online just like you were, you know, pre-pandemic, but now you're probably going to also going to complete the transaction online, which means, yes, you're going to need, you know, sales pages and product pages and all of the stuff that we write as copywriters uh, as well. So, yeah, I mean, there's a, just this insatiable demand right now for the written word, you know, and, um, and we're not just talking about you know, people that are trained in, in how to do this um, are in are in huge demand. Not not a ton of people, I, you know, out there understand this principle right now. So I want to get into some examples so we can show kind of what the products will be. But real quick, I want to run through just two more slides. This one. So for those of you, we talked a little bit about marketing dollars. This is what's being pumped out to business owners and marketers. How much do I actually spend on content? 25 to 30% of my marketing budget. So if I have $5 million to spend, that's how, like, this is how much I'm spending on content. And I wanted to point this out because I think a lot of times when writers are looking at the copy and the content side of the spectrum, it feels like the copywriters are over here and they make all the great money. And we're going to talk about money in a minute because I like to talk about the money side of things. But the content writers are being just as much money as being spent on the content side of things. So I show you, to, I want to illustrate this to you both to get your mind wrapped around how much money is being spent but also from your perspective to show how much businesses value you as the content writer. And that's important yeah. because when we get into talking about how you land clients and how you connect with companies. I want you going out there with that hat on knowing I deliver a heck of a lot of value. If I'm not there, if the content isn't there, the sales writers, they've got nobody reading their stuff. It's your job as the content writer to wrangle all these new people who are online and get them excited about going to REI or whatever the brand is or buying the thing. That's your job is to educate. And so you're just as valuable. And I say that not to diminish the copywriter's side of things, but to make sure that you're walking out with that equal shoulders back, head high. I'm a content writer. And because without me, nothing happens. Sales don't happen without you, the content writers. And it's an important mindset shift that I think content writers need to have. The other thing I wanted to show is just the amount of jobs on the content side. This is on LinkedIn, 215,000 jobs posted right now for just content. And this is companies who have a full-time need. That's not even talking about the millions of companies who just need content, have no idea how to do it, or, or are trying to scale. They've got one person in-house who's now going to hire a dozen content writers to actually get the stuff done because the volume it doesn't stop. It's not like you put up a website and you're like, oh, I'm done with the content, <laughs> right? Russ, you have to keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on. So let's, I'd like to hand this over to you actually. Can you show us some examples of, if I can figure out how to unshare my screen. Yeah, and I was laughing, I was laughing at your, at when you showed the budgets and stuff for content marketing, because you know, even a decade ago, this, this wasn't really a term. Content marketing was not even a term. I mean, it was, you know, people didn't understand. Now, you, this is what companies are actively searching for. When I got started in this, they would be, um, you'd have to go in there and convince them about content marketing. Now it's the other way around because like everybody's looking for content. Um, let me make sure I'm sharing. My While you're doing that, that's a good point too. It's something that we don't really talk about a lot is the industries, what's being pushed to them. And this is in any industry. If you're a dentist, if you manufacture dog food, you manufacture infant safety, you're an accountant you have an industry association or whatever it is that's constantly sharing what's happening in marketing, what you should be doing to run your business effectively, what you should be doing to bring buyers in. The phrase content marketing is now at the front of all of it. 
Yeah. So it's no longer like Russ was saying 10 years ago, you might have, you might have to explain like, well, let me show you what content is like Russ is going to do right now. But now remember the associations, the industries that they're part of are having this constantly push them in order to be an effective, whatever it is that you sell, you must be doing content marketing. Imagine being a dentist and someone saying, you have to have content marketing as part of your marketing mix. What? I don't even know what, I'm not a writer. I'm not a publisher. I'm not a marketer. I'm a dentist. What do I do with that now? And it it just created. So it's no longer a, let me explain content marketing. It's like, oh, you do that thing? Awesome. Because they're telling me that I need it. Help me get that. Help me do it. Because it takes takes time. We need people to sit down and write things and, yes. you know, and it's and, not and, easy. <laughs> yeah and it's well it, it, it it's something that's very you know that's why they go out and hire people to do it because uh, you know they it used to be a lot easier to get sales online back when the internet was young and google was sort of you know not so smart but today you need to have good content to win and it, to have good content you need to hire writers to do it you know the dentist doesn't have time to do this work and it's really at his disservice if he does right because every hour spent on writing he's losing money where it should be in someone's mouth (laughs) yes yeah so anyway yeah the the word content marketing didn't used to be a word and now is the the thing you know so it it's like wayne gretzky a great hockey player they asked him what his secret was he said you skate where the puck is going not where the puck is, right? So I love that. where the puck is going and that this is where the puck is going. It's going here and it's not going away uh, because uh, there's just an insatiable demand for it. But this, this piece of content right here, we kind of discussed and set up a little bit earlier. Um, you know, if, you, if you're wondering, you know, how hard, did it, how hard is it to put together a piece of content like this? Well, this is a, a type of content called a listicle. And... Um, it is just a list and you can see that it's literally just somebody went through and organized what you need to be a mountain biker. And Oh, by the way, we sell all of the stuff in here. We sell the gloves and they link over. See, you know, we sell the helmets and if I click there, I'm going to go across to the helmets. If the link works yeah, over here to these biking helmets, this is why the business is making money. See, Somebody goes online, they're like, man, you know, I think I might, might become a mountain biker today. You know, have you ever done that? All of a sudden, one day you're not a mountain biker, one day you're not a guitar player, one day you're not a golfer, one day you're not this or not that. And, you, and then the next day you start to identify as that and you go online and you start to research. And you're saying, you know, what I need is I just need a big checklist to tell me what I need to become this thing. And a mountain biker. And our, here is REI, huge retailer that has put together a nice checklist for you and then links across to the various products. It's just one form of content, but you know, <laughs> this is genius. This is what uh, we used to call uh, before it sounded a little weird to call it this, but it, we used to call it a money page, right? This is a money page. This page makes money for REI and they have checklists for all of the categories of things that they sell. If you're familiar with the company, they sell things in, canoeing and mountain climbing and you know fishing and all the different things and you know you can see up here camping hiking climbing cycling they build these checklists and these are money pages for them this is a excellent use of what we call content marketing to attract in somebody that is interested in a topic and then move them along into the sales process and that's really what's important here is is that we understand how content connects back to business right so, you know, because you could have a, you know, remember all those uh, Icon has cheeseburger memes with the cats on them and they were just silly and funny. And we see a lot of that sort of content online um, still today, a lot of funny memes or jokes or different things like that. And people interact with that. And that is content. It is content. But what we really want to learn about is how to produce something like this that has tremendous business value to, to a company, right? That somebody would come along here and end up in here buying product for REI. That's how you become a valuable writer, content marketer, marketer to people is you understand how to produce content that helps people make informed buying decisions. 
And this is a really smart piece from REI. Um, what are your thoughts on this one, Rebecca? You like this? Well, it's got 235, almost five-star reviews. So yes, and I was trying to fill in my own blank. Like, what was my latest, what do I need to be? It was tennis. I'm going to be a tennis player. I need the shoes and the racket. Yeah. And it's such a funny thing. And we dismiss this as writers like, oh, but that's so easy. But as Rush just said, it's a money page. When I first joined AWI, we were not even talking about writing for the web. That was one of the first things that I brought to the company was this idea of the web is different. Thanks to Nick Osborne, I brought him in. And we oftentimes talked about the money page as the first way to get your foot in the door was to go to a website and identify the money pages and then go to the client or the company and say, what would it mean for you if I could make this page work better? And so right. that was such a great in. We didn't talk about content marketing back then. We didn't call it a listicle. We didn't call it even content. We called it the money page because it was, it's right. the perfect illustration of where content hands off into. And if you're looking at into the sales process, now, if you're looking at this page and you're saying, well, that's just a list of products. It's not though. It really is for the person who wants to get into something. You could do the same exact thing of, I have a new baby. What do I need to at home? I'm pregnant. I'm eight months pregnant. I'm about to have this baby in the next month. What do I actually need? Having a page that makes me feel like, okay, I know I have a list of things that I need yeah. to do for, and it could have more content. It could just be a direct list. But if you even look at the list, it wasn't just a list of product. It was a list of, even if you don't click through and buy the things, it's still the list that you need. Here's your yeah. core gear. Here are your repair items because your tire is going to blow up. Something's going to happen. Let's be prepared. So even if someone didn't click through to buy, this list is incredibly valuable to them. So I yeah, love I mean, You can see that you can see some of these things they don't sell like baby wipes and <laughs> railhead permits and stuff. I want to know for cleanup. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's an important. It's an important thing that you brought up here because this content is not just designed to drive sales. It's, it's designed to be useful, useful, whether they buy or not. And, um, that that feels good when you're writing content like this that's designed to be very useful. Like, let's take a look at this piece here from, so uh, I have used this software and it's very good software. It's called Office Vibe. It's got a cool name too, Office Vibe. Yes. And what it does, it takes the vibe of the office by sending emails to the employees and saying like, how are things in the office? You know, how are you feeling today? How are the snacks? You know, like, you know, do you feel like you're being fairly... And they, they continuously are surveying the, the employees to find out whether they're uh, happy at work. And so it's a pretty cool software. But the person that the software is trying to reach is managers. They're trying to reach people that are managing other humans because those managers are interested in finding out the vibe of their employees. You know, how are their employees feeling? And so they, they, they are very much interested in getting in front of managers here at Office Vibe. So what do they do? They go out, they get a writer, and they say, create something like this for our uh, website. Interview questions for managers. Super simple, right? On the, you know, yeah, let's, let's create a, a big resource here for people to have interview questions when they're going to go hire. Now, why do you build this piece? You build this piece because it will attract managers, and that's who we want to reach. Right. So when we get people to enter their email address here and get this guide, they become a new lead for Office Vibe. And then Office Vibe can start to use email and other things to try to sell them the software. But this is a big lead generation piece right here. And it was created by a writer like you. So, um, you know, and it what it is, what is it? It's just a you know, a guide on interview questions that would be something very useful to the person they're trying to reach, which is managers. Does that Just make sense? Just pause for one second, guys. Raise your hand if you think that you could write this, right? Like this is kind of, do you think that you could write the listicle on REI? If I asked you, even if you've never done mountain biking before, could you research and do that and find the list? Could you, could you interview a mountain biker and get a list? Yes. Go back to the, the interview questions, Russ. Like as I'm looking at this, I'm like, I could do that. I could do that. And that's not even my area of expertise, but I could, if no matter what a client asked me to do, because there's so much research available to you, it's just about writing it in a really great, compelling, readable way. I can do this, right guys? Like raise your hand. This is not that hard. 
there are, I'm guessing, some ways to go about doing it the right way that set it up for that for the sales writer on the other side. But so far, I'm not feeling very scared as a content writer. This seems pretty, and I'd love to see some more examples because I want you to, I want to get to the part two. I want to talk about money and I want to talk about kind of moving forward the business. So can you fly through a couple more examples? Because this feels yeah. really doable to me. Well, you know, and, and the thing is, there's a lot of money in writing this stuff, tons, right? And, and we showed all the budgets. There's also money in just knowing the strategy behind this and being able to put the strategy together, right? Being able to say, we should have this piece. We should create this piece. So creating the content strategy is also extremely valuable, you know, to, to come up with the idea for REI to create the mountain biking checklist in the first place, right? That's, that's also very valuable. Coming up with the idea to create something for managers that's interview questions is, is half of this too, right? It's like, man, that's a great idea. And, and you can be paid for simply developing strategy around all of this. So does that make sense, guys? So the difference would be Russ, who is the CEO of Office 5 or the creative manager comes to you and says, I'd like you to write a, a lead gen report for me, interview questions for managers, and you could get paid to write that. The flip side would be that you went to Russ and said, hey, I see, or, or Russ came to you and said, I need to attract managers. Got any ideas for a lead gen piece that are something that we could give them? And you would come back to Russ and say, I've got a great idea. Yeah. What if we wrote a report about interview questions? It would attract the right person and provide great value and insight and help move them, like actually help them with what they're trying to accomplish. Russ is going to say, yeah. that's awesome. So here's the money for the strategy. And then if you want to write it, here's the money to actually write that report. Then and we're getting right. a little bit into the money stuff here. So I do want, if you guys have specific questions as we will open it up in a little bit for questions, if, if, as we're talking, post those questions, but you start to see like, oh, wait a second. I'm not even just a work for hire anymore. What Russ is showing you is I'm now taking charge and providing the ideas, which is yeah. what we're going to talk about. The money side is a much even higher level of pay grade. <laughs> opportunity yeah yeah it is and let, let's run through one more example you wake up yeah. in the morning drip 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 you hear your your faucet leaking right and you're like oh man i thought i was gonna go to the pool today and instead i gotta looks like i gotta fix this faucet so now you got a problem so you go online you type in how do i fix a le leaky faucet and you end up here right from a piece of content here from home depot how do you fix this faucet and you start reading and this is content this was created by a writer you know, this is, this is, how do you replace this leaky faucet? I love how to stuff like this is, I type something how to almost every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and let's watch the journey that might take place toward purchase. And then even after purchase. So then, so then I'm like, okay, I can see what I need to do today. Right. And, and you're so thankful that this brand has sped up the amount of time it's going to take you to take care of this. So you can maybe you're like, Maybe I can get to the pool later, right? And then you end up over at Lowe's, right? And you read their bathroom sink faucet buying guide, right? And I understand this is kind of a boring topic, right? Sink faucets, but like, multiply this by every buying decision that gets that's being made at this very second. And everybody's online right now researching, looking at stuff like this in every buying decision, whether it's... Even if you just think of one problem, like everyone pause for a second and think of one problem that you're having this week that yeah. maybe would be great to have that you might search for. It could be anything like your baby's diaper won't stay on. Or again, mm -hmm. this, you have a leaky faucet, your tire blew out on your, you don't even know if your kid's bike tires are properly inflated. Like any <laughs> problem that you're having this week, right? Those are all <laughs> problems I've heard about this week, but like anything that's what this is. When, when Russ says multiply it, millions and millions and millions and millions. And I mean, like every Home Depot alone could probably identify thousands of problems that their potential customers are having. And they have, and they, the, the, Lowe's and Home Depot were some of the best examples to look at for content marketing. And, and one thing I didn't bring up in terms of the opportunity and why this is so big right now that, that is also at this intersection is the fact that if I'm standing out in my garage and I don't know if my child's Tires are pr properly inflated. My, the internet's in my pocket now. And that's, that's just 
finished, right? Every site, every, every website that I, that I own and every website that I work on is now getting more traffic from mobile. In other words, these phones than they are from, you know, laptops and stuff like that. So that's another thing that is just multiplied the amount of content that's needed is the, the phone, right? The fact that the internet's in everybody's now. pocket. I can search now in the garage. I don't have to like think about it to remember maybe tonight at five o'clock when I'm in front of my computer, maybe I'll search for the thing. I can find my answer now. Yeah. When's the last time you had to, you weren't able to settle a bet? Like, you know, well, what year, <laughs> what year was uh, back to the future, back to the future come out and you're arguing about it. And they're like, there are no more arguments like that. Are you even talking to my husband? Like we leave any movie. It's the same. Like there's some question. I'll challenge that right now. I am. <laughs> yeah. And you get and you're online and it, and that the argument is over, which is no more, no fun. Like it used to be fun to have those arguments, but Hold it the over internet something. is in everybody's pocket. And if you want to know whether your child's tires are inflated, you are seconds away from it. And that content is needed, right? by you know for the bicycling companies they need that kind of content let's just look at the last piece in this and this this journey can happen in seconds or it could happen in days or it could happen over years right that people are just kind of milling around do i want to buy this you know do i want to check this out but typically on something like this it's like how do i fix the faucet okay here's a buying guide and then i go and buy the product whether it's online or in the retail environment and then it's like how do i actually do this thing right? I've got the product in my hand. And believe it or not, this is a massive area of content that's needed is what do I do with the product now that I have it? And, and companies are very interested in making people successful with the products they have. Like I just bought an espresso machine. And when I bought the espresso machine, I was like, awesome, got the espresso machine. What are all these buttons? And how do I make my favorite drinks in here? And of course, I'm back online and I'm on the company's website that I bought the espresso machine and I'm watching and reading all the content about how to be successful with the product. What does that do for the company? Well, I, you know, I go around telling people I bought an espresso machine. Oh, you like it? Oh, I love it. Now, if I wasn't able to make my drink, I'd be like, I hate it. <laughs> I can't even figure out how to use it. And now I want to sell it. And I feel like I got ripped off. So creating content that makes people successful, even after they've purchased, there, there's so much content that's needed there as well. So it's content that we use to make comparisons, but at the end of the day, we want to make informed buying decisions and we want to be successful with the things we buy. And then we feel like we got a good deal and we feel excited about the companies we buy from. And that's why they want this content. The next two things I'd like to talk about real quick is I just like, to like a few more examples of types of content. So I have a few slides I can put up for you um, just to show, uh, maybe share. Nope. Am I? Nope. One second. I want you to show just because we've looked at some similar styles of content, but just if you can show, okay, there we go from the current side. So like this is a, similar to what you were talking about before, right? This would be like a blog on someone's website. Mm-hmm just so they can go and search to see other kinds of content. So this is kind of what we've been talking about so far, a very simple blog post. How long might something like this be? Oh, you know, it could be, you're going to, you're going to find a typical range of a thousand to 1500 words here. Okay. On a piece like this. And if you also did the video, would that be something in addition to the content piece itself, the writing? Yes. So, so one of the things that's exciting about content is we talked about these different vehicles, but there's also different channels. So like you have different vehicles, like we talked, let's review those. You got text. You can build content in text, audio, video, image. And okay. when you produce content, like let's say you cr produce a written piece that can also be put in, you know, turned into a video or it could be turned into an audio or it could be turned into an image. And vice versa, if you created an audio, you could turn it into a, a text piece. You could create a video out of it, right? So we call this mul you know, content multiplication, right? So where you've got, you've got one piece of content that you might've produced and got paid for, you can multiply that across different vehicles or also different channels. Like, so what if we wrote and we take about 10 little chunks of, of this post and we break them apart the 10 pieces and we say, here's uh, 10 different things you can post on Facebook or post on LinkedIn. So we like 
break it down into smaller pieces so that people can use it on social media. You can get paid to do that. So what, what we try to do with content when we understand, when we understand the best ways to use it is that once we've produced something that's good, we want to get as much value out of it as possible. And to do that, we use this concept called content multiplication, which I have one of your examples actually in the slide deck. So let's, we'll walk through in a second. So vehicles is what you're talking about now. And then there's channels. So what would the difference? So this would be a, let's say blogging would be a channel. Mm -hmm. And then this is a newsletter. A newsletter would be a channel. So like a, a, a channel is like, where are you broadcast? How are you getting this out to different people? So yes, a newsletter like Morning Brews here, you know, a writer put this together and it goes out through email. It's a different channel, but it might be the same content that's been changed a bit to be put into a newsletter, but it might be the same content that was put on the blog or put into a video or whatever. So um, that the the point being that the the ability to 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 multiply content, but into different vehicles or different and, and push them out in different channels creates the ability for you to send a bigger uh, invoice to your client. <laughs> you well, know, let's like, talk about that. Just, so just to catch everybody up. So the way I've got it, and tell me if I have this right, Russ. So we can think about content as vehicles. So I write something in text form, like this newsletter. I can then turn it into audio. I can then turn it into video. I can turn it into an image. So that's when, we, when we're talking about the vehicles of the format, I guess, of the content. And then we have the marketing channels of the content. So we might have a blog, we might have a newsletter, social media. How are we actually getting our messaging pushed out to the people that we're trying to reach? Just so we're all on the same page. Does that sound fair? To have that right? right? That's exactly it. That's exactly it. When you, you know, when you go through the trouble of producing something well, um, you can transform it many, many different times uh, into many, many different places. And that's, and that's what you're going to want to do. With, with so like the- I could have, social media channel, but I could have the same content on social media as a text. Let's just think of a Facebook post written out in text. I could have a social media video with the exact same content. Mm -hmm. I could have an infographic with the exact same content. So now I've got a channel with multiple vehicles. (laughs) And then as we're going to show them here in a second. So this is just like a social media post. This would be an example, right? Of using the same content possibly that went out in a newsletter or article or, or a piece of it, getting people over to the article on the website. This is a a Facebook ad. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, when you produce content, you want to, um, you know, we talk in, in the, in the, in the certification course, we talk about this concept of the, the fact that the American Indian was known for using every piece of the Buffalo. You know, they, when they would, when they would kill a Buffalo, they would use every piece of it uh, and get value out of it. And that's exactly what, you know, we learned to do in that course is, is how do you take a piece of content that you, that was very valuable and then pull it apart and, or, or multiply it, you know, so that it, you're getting the bet, the most out of it possible. Let's walk through that actually. So that, yeah. so can you talk quickly about first setting the stage? So now we've learned about vehicles, we've learned about the channels and how one idea could really turn into all these different formats and go through all these different channels. And we're going to walk you guys through it if it seems a little vague. But from the writer's perspective, can you just talk about that? I have an idea for a piece of content. It's not, I'm not just writing a blog. If I'm able to put it into these vehicles and in different formats for different channels, it's not like I'm still just getting paid for the one idea, right? The idea here is that now I'm actually producing lots of stuff off of the same idea and the same original piece of content that I wrote. Can you just explain it a little bit from the business side of things for the content writers, what this means for them? Well, let's say you've got a, you, you've got a client who you're, you've got a, a, a deal where you're, you're creating four blog post articles for them per month for $250 a piece. So that's going to be $1,000. You're going to invoice them for either month, each month. But what if you told them that I'll write you four blog articles six Facebook updates, 10 LinkedIn updates. Um, I'll create uh, uh, two newsletters so you can send a newsletter out every two weeks. And I'll invoice you now $4,000 a month for that, right? So 
why are you invoicing $4,000 a month? Well, you're producing a lot more value for them, but that doesn't mean you need to go and write all of those various different things. You're going to start with your blog posts, you know, so you write your four blog posts and then you're going to chunk down the pieces of content that are in the blog. And you're going to create these little smaller social media updates. You know, you've probably noticed if you use social media like Facebook or LinkedIn, that these posts are usually pretty short. And so you're going to pull, pull, we call it splintering. So we pull a splinter out of a blog post. We might pull two or three different splinters out of one blog post and say, here's three Facebook updates from this one article. So you're not going to create more content. You're going to take the same awesome stuff you produced it in your four blog posts, and you're going to pull it apart for social media updates. You're going to take your newsletter. When you go to create your newsletter, you're going to uh, create blurbs that are sort of tease your blog posts, right? So all of it, the amount of work, you know, you're going to get so much more return. So, and so is the client. That's why this, this works is that they get a ton of value out of it and you get a ton of value out of it because you can invoice more. And the only reason that you're able to do this is because you understand how content marketing really works. It's not more content necessarily. It's building something of quality and then, you know, breaking it apart or changing the vehicle, right. Or changing the channel and helping your clients understand that. Yeah. Like I could, I can write all of this stuff for you. And, and, um, you know, you, so you take the same amount of work that you've been doing and uh, produce that much more value for your clients simply because you understand content marketing um, rather than, you know, just saying, OK, well, I'll write four blog posts. And then, you you know, if you wanted to write those six social media updates, now you got to go come up with ideas for all six of those. No, that's not the best way to do it. The most value that your client will get is if you use the pieces that you already have, the high quality stuff you created in your blog posts. And that's really where that we talk sense. about like 10xing your income and really seeing yeah. your picture. You have a blog post and 250 is pretty light for, you know, a, a, a significant blog post, but let's just use that example. But then to add on Facebook ads, it's another 250, add on LinkedIn, it's another 250, add on two newsletters, it's another 2000. Now all of a sudden a 200 dollars blog post has quickly turned into a 2,500, really much more project or, or, or collection of content you're in, you're handing over a package so not only am i this what you agree this is such a great idea client not only am i going to just write a blog on it i'm going to show you how to get so much mileage out of this idea that we're going to drive people from facebook we're going to drive people from linkedin we're going to write different content for your newsletter but it's really just get, with the intention of coming back to this blog post that is setting them up for the sale like using that listicle example for rei the more content that they have pointing at that listicle, the better chance off that someone's going to click through and buy a helmet, right? To the next, to the selling piece. So that's where you really, you come up with a great idea for a piece of content. And then, yes, is that a great idea? We're all on the same page. That's going to do what you need to set it up for the sale. Awesome. It's going to bring in the right person, the marketer who's looking, or the manager who's looking to hire. We've got them on interview questions. You got a manager on the hook. That's going to do a good job for you. Great. Let's bring some more managers into that page. Let's get everybody that we can possibly reach out to onto that one. So you hired me to write a lead gen and I charged you a thousand dollars for it. But then when I came back with my proposal, I not only came back with that lead gen piece, I came back with your social campaign, your newsletters, how you're going to drive, people, how you're going to follow up with them, all that other content just off that one idea. And like Russ was saying, you could take that interview question. Let's say there's 20 interview questions and Jump split them up. into 20 individual social media posts right question you know here's a great question you should ask for more download our lead gen this is just one thing so it's not even like you have to really do any more work and why wouldn't you get more money for the thing that you've already done just by adding a little bit extra time to spin it so russ i'd love for you to walk through this example so this is from our, our previous presentation but so like this is just a blog post right yeah this is an article about creating a particular type of challenge um so it's, it's essentially the only thing you need to know is this is a how-to post basically uh and so we re you know this article is written and then it's spun out into many different types of content like it turns into a facebook post and not just here. one facebook right it would be like seven mm -hmm. to ten different facebook posts that would all drive back to that one thing could turn into a linkedin post yeah and, it, and you know think about all the different channels and all the vehicles that you have to pick from, and it's 
pretty staggering where you could, you know, how much value you could get out of one piece. Quick video post, same exact thing. <laughs> same challenge. thing, yeah. And and this isn't a this isn't something your clients like. Oh, or this is a shortcut. This is what your clients should be doing. Your clients should be creating really great stuff that's right on message, creating money content. You know, content that attracts people that want to buy that product. Like, think about how how clear it is what that person's trying to do if they are reading a post called the mountain biking checklist. Right. <laughs> that person's very interested in buying mountain biking equipment. It's a very good post for them. And so you want to take that and get as much value out of it as possible. And you, you know, just to take that one as an example, um, we could put social media updates about here's all of the safety equipment that you need for mountain biking. And then here's all the clothing that you need for mountain biking. And all you're doing is taking all the stuff you've already done and just breaking it up into your little categories and pushing it out in a different formats um yeah really smart stuff and a great way to get you know more on that invoice like i said you know and and the the cool thing about this too rebecca is that when you get one client um you can rather than having to go hunt down more clients you can just simply start to provide more value for that one client or two clients or three clients right and um, rather than always being running around trying to find clients and being on sales calls all the time and all that stuff, you can get, you can provide so much more value for your singular client because you know, this type of strategy um, and, and therefore get more money from them, right? Because you're providing so much more value to them that you don't have to be hunting all the time as, as a copywriter, you can get yourself a couple, two, three, four really solid clients and, and you can make a great living writing that way so and even just like what so what I was actually just like doodling as you were talking I was paying attention but my brain started to go on the REI example and I was thinking about that listicle and so I, I delivered that whole package on how to bring people in who are searching for I want to be a mountain biker but then I would maybe take a step back and say okay how else can I help REI well I could bring in other audiences who maybe aren't necessarily all the way like how to mountain bike with kids how to you know how to start um, or I might go a little bit broader, like five things you can do with your kids outdoors this summer. Mm -hmm. And one of the things might lead to my listicle on mountain biking. Mm -hmm. One might lead to uh, pickleball. One might lead to camping. And now all of a sudden, again, I'm at a never ending need or opportunity because the client, I can come back and say, hey, now I've got another idea. We did the one on mountain bike. Let's do one on camping. Let's do one on pickleball. Let's do one on fly fishing. <laughs> Let's do one on golfing. And then really just keep on because once, like you just said, I'm now, I know what you want company. I know who your prospect is. I did a great job for you now. How easy is it for me just to be like, all right, here's the next one we're going to tackle. I'm guessing yeah. that's very well received, right? And for, and for these kinds of clients, they, there's an old saying that when you go to paint the Golden Gate Bridge. You have so many sayings. Start. I love this. You start painting it, and by the time you're done painting it, you have to go right back around and start again, right? Well, that's the same kind of thing that happens with these clients, right? It's like there is an endless supply of content that they need. So, you know, when you're able to, you know, understand what you should produce, that's the big key, right? Like what should be produced? And it's like you start to understand, like, why don't we build a whole bunch of checklists around all the different categories of stuff that we that we build? Well, once you get through with all your checklists that you're going to write for the company, you're going to have to turn right back around and start right back again painting, which is good news for the painter, right? Who never has to go out and find another job again, because it's like, I, what do you do? Well, I, I work with these three, four clients, you know, and, and right again. consistently, I'm just consistently producing valuable content for them. And that's how you get to this writer's life, right? Where it's like, um, you, you've got three, four clients. That, you know, that are paying you really good money to create value for them and everybody's winning, right? That's the reason why Google became Google, by the way, is that they've turned the web into a very, um, you know, d democratic place, if you will, where it's like, look, if you've got great stuff, you win. If you don't, you lose. And everybody knows that now. So they need people that can create great content, great experiences for people online. 
and that's you, you know, and, and it, it's not easy to do it. It takes time and effort, as you know, to produce something that's good. And, and that's why they need to hire you. They, the dentist does not have time to sit down and produce this. Uh, no business owners have time to do this. This is a marketing function. And it, and so it needs to go out to a marketer that understands how to do it. And nor should they, because the business owner is really great at what they do. And right. for every minute spent not doing what they do well, somebody else can write the content. Somebody else can't drill the tooth. Like that is their function. That's what they're trained on. And that's just another mindset thing, guys. You are, when you take, when you invest in yourself and learn something like this, whether it's content or sales letters or anything, really go out into the marketplace, recognizing that you are an equal, you are a professional in the industry, providing a professional service to another professional, whether it's the business owner, creative director, professional solo provider, solopreneur, whatever it is, you are, you know, you're, you're a master of your craft, just like they are a master of theirs. And I, I think that that's important, especially for those of you who are new. I don't want you walking out into the world. Can I please write some content for you? I want you to walk out saying, I handle like 50% of the people coming into your business. This is, this is my job to wrangle all the opportunity that's out there for you. Bring them through your front door. Identify the marketer or the manager who needed those interview questions to bring the right person for you to then let your sales team sell to them. That's my job. That's the content. That's a big job, guys. So make sure that you're not limping into this. Make sure you're going out there with the, I'm a content writer. I'm a content marketer. I'm a content strategist. Russ, now that is part of the reason. And so we're going to open up a questions here in about two minutes. So if you guys go ahead okay. and put the Q&A. Can I read you something that was just because I was going through from the last class. I want to read you just really quickly something that somebody sent me. And so when about. he says class, we just did a certification with Russ on content uh oh. when did it end a couple weeks ago right it just yes. ended and we are about we're going to open one again i do want him i want you to talk to that about that just a little bit because i do okay. think for people who are on who are like okay great i want to do this show me the way like show me how show me what show me that's what the certification will be for for us to actually walk you through teach you how to write it how to strategize how to present it how to land clients how to go from the 250 blog post to the 2500 dollars proposal but so go ahead tell me from the class well rebecca this girl, this girl named rebecca we oh. were looking at it's not you uh but rebecca she said you know taking these classes has helped my confidence in myself and that's that's really you know it's helped my confidence in myself and is making a difference i've been mar uh, marketing myself daily and this week i've gotten uh three new clients um and from i got the, a from the last third yes yeah, from our last class amazing she, she posted this June 4th. And these are the kinds of things I love to see is, is so someone who was lacking, went from lacking confidence to now blowing her horn that she just landed three new clients. Like that to me is like, yeah. that's why we do it. That's it is why we do it. <laughs> it, it, it. These are some of the best things that we see in is, is, is inside the Facebook group is, is, you know, people kind of doing that Wahoo. Yeah. Know, look at what happened here type thing. And that's Didn't you say, I mean, Russ, you have such an extensive teaching background and then from digital marketer as well. Didn't you once say that 85 members are your favorite students because they actually do the stuff and are successful? <laughs> yes. I, I love the students at AWA because like, you know, when I, when I teach a class, people show up, people ask questions, you know, they don't just uh, sit back and let life happen. They, they get after it. And we do a lot of, talking in the, in the certification about mindset and about, you know, how to overcome things like, you know, do, can I really do this, that kind of thing um, and teach you how to get clients and that kind of thing. But I know we're going to get into some of that a little bit later. So um, did you want to take some questions or did yeah, you? Yeah, let's go ahead. And open up. So Jade, why don't you jump on and join us? So Jade, if you're not familiar with her, she's the head of our training team and I uh, hi, everyone. Build, build out our certification. So Jade, you've been in the Q and A, what kind of questions are we getting? Hi. So, Russ, I think you're going to know where I'm leading with this one. But in this, in the certification that we just did, okay, at the end, there's a final assignment. And they have to submit through writing two blogs and a newsletter. Can you please tell me what that final deliverable was or is? What are you, are you talking about the, the singular? The final document? assignment. Yeah, okay. So, can, say that again, sorry. 
A singular document. And what kind of document is it? A Word document. Nothing technical involved, correct? No, you do not need to be technical to, to do this. Yeah. Anybody out there that takes, like, you know, we get that question a lot. Do I need to know how to build web pages? Do I need to know how to do graphics and create videos and do podcasts and do all this stuff? It's like, no. If you can type in a Word document, we're, you're good. So yeah, exactly. if you type in a Word document, I, honestly, if you could use a typewriter, I used to use a typewriter. That's how we'll look at, look at all this gray hair. I mean, you know, if, if, if you can type into, you know, you know that's it. That's not a technical skill at all. This is a, uh, I always talk about the difference between the engineer and the artist, right? The engineer, there are plenty of engineers out there that will help get our stuff online and do all of that stuff. The value is in the art, right? The ability to create the content that's what we learn in this class. And it's, it's far more valuable than honestly, than being able to put it online. Right. You don't need to be a graphic designer either. Yeah. Okay. The other question, um, B2B and B2C, does content apply to both? Yes, Yes, because business is H to H it's human to human. We are all out there trying to make informed buying decisions. We want to get success with what, no matter what we're buying, no matter it's, it, it, it's B2B, it's B2C, it's, it's nonprofit. If you're looking to try to drive donations and, and, and further your cause, any sort of thing we're trying to do online requires content. And in B2B, there's, I mean, so there's content that's relevant on all sides. So everything we talked about, B2B buyers are also through social media. B2B buyers are also using newsletters. B2B buyers are also mm-hmm. using blogs. So the companies are using those channels on the B2B side, there's also other content pieces. So when you write a case study, when you write a white paper, things that are, are more unique to the B2B side of things, those are also content pieces. But take away, if nothing else, what Russ taught you today. If someone hires you to write a case study, if someone hires you to write a white paper in B2B, present every other way of content that you can use to drive. Because that's the key to all of this is it's not put up a blog post and walk away. Hopefully it'll do something. It really is about using the blog list, getting that content through all the channels because we're all in different places. We all like to consume things different ways. I don't like to watch videos. I like to read. Someone else doesn't like to read. They want to watch videos. Jade wants to listen while she's walking outside. So it allows us to really scale our own ideas and our own writing into lots of different channels. I want to talk about this one really quick from Erin. What are your thoughts about marketing yourself as content and copywriter? Uh, she's really a content writer with articles and blogs, but she's gaining experience on the direct response side of things and sales letters. Erin, I say go for it because you're basically telling any company that you talk to, I understand the full spectrum. I know how to bring in the right people on the right content, and I know how to sell them. What, remember what Russ said, I have my notes from the very beginning, that the research is starting online, research starts online and purchase ends online. You can walk into a company and do the whole thing. So for those of you listening and say you don't want to do sales writing, don't worry, you can stop on the content side. But for you, Erin, you can actually go the full gamut and more power to you. You're just going to be more effective on both sides. So speaking of, there was an overarching question that was asked about 10 times. What is the difference between content or content writer and copywriter? Can you answer the difference between the two? Do you want me to tackle that one, Russ? Yeah, go for it. So the way we talk about ADI, there's there's persuasion which is on the side of selling, where you're starting to actually ask for someone like the helmet page. It's now going to start to talk about the types of helmets and how much the helmets cost and the specific helmets. Then there's the persuasive side of things where content typically lives. But if you think of it like a bridge, it's all attached. So the further to the one side you are, the persuasive side, five things to do with your kids this summer outdoors, right? That is very, very light on the persuasive side. Now in that piece, I'm going to start setting the tone for mountain biking and camping and hiking and how great will it be to be with your kids. I might start to talk about product. Maybe not. I'm really just setting the stage. Then I'm going to move forward into this person is now mountain biking with kids. Now I'm getting a little bit further down the persuasive path and I'm starting to tip closer to where my sales friend is about to hand off. So I'm writing blog posts and everything about how to go mountain biking with your kids this summer. Eventually there will be things in that content or pieces of content that start to set up what I would call the handoff to the sales side, where the bridge, you're on the bridge and you get so close to persuasion that you start to tip and start to say, if you're ready to start mountain biking, here's what you need to know. Go to our listicle. Now that content piece is right in the middle, right? 
that listicle had direct links to the sales pages. Those sales pages are on what I would call the, pre the persuasive side of things, writing sales pages about that are selling a specific helmet, that are selling a specific mountain bike. And then the after stuff, okay, you've bought the mountain bike. You're going to need a pump. You're going to need a helmet. You're going to need apparently baby wipes. There are other things that are going to happen. How do you, what, how, do you know how to tune your bike two miles into your ride? You know, all that stuff. That's additional content that sh kind of shows up on the sales message side of things after the sale. So there's this really nice arc. What I want to say though, is I don't want anyone, I'm going to jump ahead to the next question, to resist the selling side. That is something that I think draws people to the content side of things because they're like, oh, I don't like direct response. I want to live on the content side, which is all well and good. But remember, you make a lot of money as a content writer writing for companies because why? They are selling something and without you, they can't do it. So you can't have one side of the mindset without having the other side of the mindset. You make a lot of money as a writer. You are in big demand right now because people are buying things online. They need you now. So don't walk in with this mindset of, oh, I don't sell, I don't, because your companies don't want to hear that. Your company, your clients don't want to hear that you have no interest in selling their products, right? That's what they're in business for. So you're helping on that early part. So I just wanted to give a little speech about not fearing direct response so much, because it's important to know it all the way through that you're just on a bridge that connects all the way to the sale. Can I just say that the best thing that I learned about being a mother is that baby wipes are the most underrated item in the whole world ever. It's on every listicle for everything. Every listicle for anything added and your content is just going to soar. That's, that's <laughs> my tip for today for being a content writer. Okay, so another overarching question that we had and I love the way Larice put this shit. I'm so psyched about this idea, but I have no idea where to start. <laughs> so we have a lot of beginners that are on here that are new to AWAI, new to oh, this fantastic. idea of content. Yeah, new to the idea of content, marketing, content, writing. Um, Russ, two questions for you. One, where do they start? <laughs> Number two, is there space in the realm for new writers when it comes to content? Yeah, I mean, I think we've, you know, we've been talking about how much room there is in this pool right now because the pool keeps getting bigger. We can't, it's looking more like an ocean these days. So yeah, there's 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 a lot more content. And, and you know, um, what we saw in the last round of, uh, we've, we saw more success with students getting clients than we have ever seen. I, I teach another class with this too. And I think, it was partly because this is hot, but it was also because there is just a tremendous demand for content. There's a tremendous demand right now for good people and employment as the economy is starting to bounce back. So there's just people are hiring right now. Like it, it's 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 very exciting uh, how much opportunity there is in uh, digital marketing right now. It's just you know, in, in particular in this content marketing space. And where would you start? I mean, I'm going to be completely biased and say to start with this class, you know, that, that, that we're getting ready to, to fire up because um, I'm going to shortcut, I'm going to shortcut the whole thing for you. I'm going to show you everything I've learned. Well, why did you tell them what is the first class, be, be, not the product, like the first class that they start out with? What is that? Fundamentals. Yeah. So we're going to, that first class, you will know more than 99% of people know about content marketing uh, in one two hour session. And that's not to brag. That's just literally because I distilled everything strategically and fundamentally down that I've learned 15 years in this business into that session. And then from that point on, all we do is just keep drilling down into the various different pieces that I teach you in that first session. Cause I'm going to, Teach you the fundamentals. I'm going to start you up here at 30,000 foot, right? Even if right now you're completely don't, you know, you're like, man, I just don't, I can't quite grasp what's, what this is about just yet. That session, two hours, we're going to go off through all the examples and look at it all and, and see it from 30,000 feet. That's how I teach. I start up here and then I drop down into something small and then I come back up and I say, okay, we're up at work. Now we're here and you go back down and that's, 
that's my style of teaching is, is to keep returning back to the, the biggest view that I showed you at the very, very beginning so that you keep knowing where you are in the process that you're learning. So um, the first class is where you start, fundamentals. Are you ready for so all of this? Just, to, just to, if you're totally ready to guy, we have different levels of training in this company. We have a hundred different self-study programs where you do it on your own. And then we have live hands-on sessions. So the certifications that we put together assume that you're coming in not really knowing what content writing is. So Russ, in this case, it's content. Russ will take you from the very beginning and walk you all the way through. The certifications train you the what, they train you the how, so you actually can do the job. They have you working on an actual assignment the all the way through so that you're getting real world experience. I'll actually join Russ for one of the sessions as your client. So you'll be doing a real assignment for AWAI. We will work on this assignment together. You'll get feedback on this assignment. And then at the very end, should you choose, you don't have to, but you can then go on to test for a certification. You can turn in your final assignment for a grade and you can decide to take a certification exam. If you pass 80% or higher on both of those assignments, you'll actually get a badge from us say you've been certified. Now you don't have to do the certification, but it is part of all of these programs. But no matter what, whether you take the certification or not, you walk away with confidence, like our friend Rebecca talked about, you walk away with experience. So you're not just learning theory, you're genuinely, you're learning, you're applying, you're learning, you're applying, because learning only takes you so far, right? Until you can actually do what you've learned on a real assignment, you're kind of still thinking about swimming and reading about swimming, but until you get in the pool, can't really be confident that you can swim. So we have you applying all the way through and then you walk, you get feedback on that no matter what. So you will walk away with a portfolio, professional samples that you will feel confident that you know what to do because you've done it. You've proved to yourself and you have something that you can then prove to others. Yes, I can do it. I'm professional in here. So that's really what our certifications are all about. So that's what Russ, that's, that's his role. And he will then even close out with, now that you know how to do this, here's how you get clients. Here's how you go present yourself. Here's how you have those conversations. He is exceptional. I've worked with so many experts on, and this is part of the 80 by method. You learn the skills, we teach you how to get paid for them. Because if you're not getting paid for them, it's kind of a hobby, right? You're, if you're here with 80 by, you're looking to make money. That's, so we always, that's part of everything you take will have the money piece of it. But Russ is one of the best experts I've ever worked with on that money piece. And I think it's because he is so rooted still in working with clients as well. So whenever we do a mock interview where I'm the client, I'm blown away at the way he leads me through the conversation, certain phrasing, the way he sets things up that by the time we get to the end of the proposal, I'm like, just give me the freaking number. I don't even care. I want the thing that you're selling me. And that... <laughs> The way he teaches it through illustration of, of walking you through it, I feel like I could pitch anybody on content writing now, having gone through Russ's training with confidence. And I mean, obviously I am who I am too, but even if I were starting again, I've talked to a lot of professionals in my career. Russ is hands down one of the best I've ever worked with on that side of the table as the writer trying to get me to sign a contract with him. So it's the full picture when we talk about certifications. Yeah. And it, you know, and I appreciate your words there. It, in, um, one of the things we cover very extensively in this class, because I think it's critical is your mindset and how you understand how to position what you're learning to clients and being able to sell them. Like, this is the value of this. Right. And, uh, being confident. That's why I love that comment. We've had several other people, you know, what I'll do, what I do is I, I challenge throughout the, 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 the course, um, and give you some accountability in terms of like, let's go out there and get some clients, you know, send an email today and I'll give you, I'll give you an email to shoot out to some people, uh, or to post on your social media. You know, I want you to, I want you to feel very confident in your skills. Um, I want, you know, and this is one of the reasons I love teaching AWAI certifications. So my theory is, this is what's been true for me. And, and maybe one of the reasons why I'm, I'm a good instructor for, for this group is because I came from that myself, like back in 04 when, you know, I got laid off and, you know, I was uh, really in bad financial shape and, you know, you fast forward through my life and I've been able to keep, make these leaps and bounds. And what I trace it all back to is three things. I've been, I acquire skills. 
I get experience and I work on my connections. And that's what we get all three of those with AWAI certifications. One of the reasons I love being a part of it, we get the skills, but then like Rebecca says, skill is only going to take you so far. Then we get the experience with actually doing the work. Right. And then we also, one of the things we, you should not discount and it's hard for us to talk about until you actually experience it is being a part of the community of the class and of AWAI greater, right? Because it is really those connections too that help you feel more confident, people cheering each other on that are all in the same boat, right? And these people, there's people in there that will help. You know, there's, there's students of mine from these classes that I now have working on consulting contracts and stuff that I have, uh, you know, with completely outside of AWAI. And, and they're just writers that I met through, they were students in these classes. And I know that there's, you know, people talk and they become friends and they end up meeting and, you know, you go to events at AWAI and everybody sees each other, which is all starting up again. So it's like, it's really cool that all three pieces are here in these certifications, skills, experience, connection. And those are the things that will take you to the next level in your, in your career, in your profession. Um, and even personally, so. And I have to say, speaking of that, so we have a few people listening and um, that are on here that are currently a part of our, our content group. And Jonathan uh, wrote in the Q&A and he said, if I can find it, <laughs> there it is. He said, take Russ's class. <laughs> And then Val said, Russ's class on content mastery mentorship is amazing. Highly recommend. And we had Jake, sorry, not Jake, Jack, who named Russ's plant. It was a very important task. <laughs> yeah. And he's watching on Facebook. And he said, I took the recent class. It was awesome. Russ is a great teacher. So you don't have to take our word for it. Uh, many of the students are in here vouching for you. Um, and let me go back to some of these Q&As. Um, Okay, so some questions about how you present or f like find this content. Is it is it an approach? What do you think of the approach to go to a site, see content, approach this, the, the owner or whatever of the site and say, I have ways of fixing your site or is it a better way to find them as a client and then go about creating and improving content for them? Well, so when we talk about actually getting clients. One of the most important things that we will learn is um, methods for finding clients and actually generating these conversations, how to get people to start referring you to, to clients because referrals are gold, right? When somebody refers you and says, Hey, you know, and, and there's a couple of things that I'll say during that session that I think will be like, wow, you know, <laughs> it makes sense. And the, maybe the biggest one is, People don't refer you if you don't know what, if they don't know what you do, right? And so I'm going to teach you a process of getting very clear on what you do. Um, it's actually the very first video that you get access to as soon as you buy this class. Um, you will see there's a, there's a video called how to productize a service that I've taught many times, but when, whenever I teach it, it's one of these aha moments and, and it really makes things clear as to, you know, how do I go about getting referrals? How do I run a business that isn't worse than the, than the job that I had, for example, you know, which is, is possible to do to create a business that you're actually not super excited about getting up to do every day. That video itself is not about content marketing. It's about, it's about how to run this, uh, this copywriting business that you have. Um, but when, once you are in a conversation with a client, um, your, your job is to act like a doctor. So think about what happens when you go in to see the doctor, right? The doc, you walk into the office, you sit down, doctor says, so what's going on? Right. And th this is what, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, this is what my selling process that I'll teach you is like. So what's going on? Why are you here? And it's like, you start listening, right? You know, what's, what's the problem? Well, my elbow hurts, right? My elbow hurts over here. And you say, okay, your elbow hurts. Well, how long has that been going on? And it's, it's a series of questions, right? Selling, selling services, positioning yourself is about listening to the problem, just like a doctor would. Okay, I understand. But you're trained 
And that's what this class is about. You are trained to be able to listen and identify what the problem is by listening to the symptoms. And then you prescribe because that's what the client wants. The client doesn't want, you know, think about what would happen if, if the doctor, you're sitting in the doctor's office and you said, and you told them all about how your elbow hurts and then your doctor says, well, what do you think we should do? You don't want your doctor to say that to you. You want your doctor to say, okay, I understand hundred percent. Let me write your prescription and this is fixed or let, let's get, this is the next step, right? That's what we're going to learn how to do in this class. I'm going to teach you how to bring in a client, ask the right questions and be trained to listen to what the proper solution is and then prescribe that solution, which is the proposal, which you will have a, a whole template and everything that you'll use to shoot out the proposal. And then when you win the business, you'll know how to go and actually get those results perform the surgery, if you will, right? Write the blog posts, the emails, uh, the ads, whatever it is. And that's what this is all about. It's, it's about, you know, selling is actually about, it sounds corny, but it's about helping people. It's about listening to them. Okay, I see the problem you have and being a, an expert and trained to be able to listen for those symptoms and then prescribe the right solution, which in this case, we're going to be prescribing content to people because content can solve a lot of business problems for people uh, in the marketing department. So that was a rant and a half, but it was, but it wasn't because I love the doctor example. And again, it just mm. forces you guys to put on the, the mindset hat of I'm a professional. I'm a doctor. I'm not going to sit here and ask a bunch of questions and then ask you what you're going to do about it. Right. It puts you in that gyro seat. My other two big takeaways, two things that you said is one, listen, you have to just ask, just listen. And then be curious, like genuinely, like in this conversation with Russ today, I had all my notes. I had a bunch of questions. I was ready to ask. I didn't look at him one time because I ended up like, what about this? That makes me think about this. That's so interesting. Can you go and dip? It's just like that. When you're talking to a client, don't go in there thinking that you have to like put on a suit and have the pitch ready to go. It's not like that. People like even going back to your human to human, we want to work with humans that we like and that like us and that are curious about us and what you want to do is go into the room and Russ gives you a great example of this in the certification of how this actually plays out but just have a conversation you might find out that you don't want to work for them like going with that hat on I'm not coming in I gotta land this job I'm coming in to see if you're even a right fit for me so I just want to hear from you. I want to learn about your business. Do I believe in your products and what you're selling? Do I want to write for you? Do I feel good about this? You're going to learn a lot in that conversation and it takes all the pressure off. And then you're going to go home and you're going to put together a proposal. You don't need to worry about in that moment. All you got to do is just have a conversation, ask questions, listen to the answers and be curious. And you yeah. will do so much better than you think that you will. And I'll give you, I give you five questions in there that I always ask people in the sales conversation. Those are the five questions you're going to ask and listen. And sometimes you get to the end of the conversation like that. Like Rebecca said, you might say, I, I don't think it's a good fit for me for just personality reasons. Like, I, I don't think I want to work. I don't like your product. Like, I don't believe. <laughs> I don't <product>. like you. <laughs> or you might get to the end and say, you know what? Like, just like a doctor, might. I need to refer you to a specialist. This is not in my wheelhouse. That's another big mindset thing you'll learn that I'll go over and over again in, in my class is that it's okay to say no. It's okay to say like, that's not what I do. I love saying that. I, that's not what I do. Like people will say to me, do I need to know how to create graphics? And you say, no, you, when, when they say, can you create the graphics? You just say, no, no, that's not what I do. What I do is I write the content or whatever it is you, you know, you want to do. There are other people that can go create graphics, create video. If you want to create graphics, absolutely learn to create graphics, learn to create video, or if you already do. Um, but you don't, it's okay to say that's not what I do. And the way you, the only way to get to the point where you can say that's not what I do, or that's exactly what I do, and let me write you a prescription for this, is to listen. And that's what selling is about. Selling is about coming into a room and trying to listen so that you can diagnose and then prescribe. And that's exactly what the selling portion of this class is about. It's about how to listen and prescribe and being okay with saying, that's not what I do. So. Linda just said, I just finished the course. The information you learned is mind boggling. And if you, and you feel completely confident to get and keep 
clients. I love that. So um, there is a question from Dana about ageism and whether you found that ageism plays a role at all in content marketing or writing. It is her passion, but she feels that she's less desirable because of her age. Hold on. How old do you think I am? How old do you think Russ is? Elise Bennett was on the other day. She's turned 60 next week. So excited about there's no, why would anybody know? I wouldn't tell you my age if you asked me right now. <laughs> How does anybody know your age? That's always the question I want to ask back because I get this a lot. You come with so much more experience, calmness, curiosity than people who have less experience. If you're knowledgeable in your area of expertise, not say that you've worked in the space, not even that. Maybe you've raised children. Maybe you're into mountain biking. Whatever the thing is, if you can speak about it enthusiastically with passion, if you're curious about your customer, about your clients, they're never going, I have the exact same question that comes in. Like I'm only 21. How, what do I have to offer? It's the same thing, right? It all comes down to enthusiasm, curiosity, and good ideas. That's what gets you in the door. Your age should not matter. And you should not be going out. Anyone who has that fear, I'm 82 years old. Why are you saying that? That thought it doesn't, there's no benefit to me as your client in knowing your age. What I want to know is if you believe in my products, if you think that you can help me and that's all I care about. So don't allow that to be a self-defeating limitation that you put out there in the world. If you believe that it will defeat you, but I'm here to tell you, I don't, I couldn't tell you my writers who've written for me and I've hired dozens. I could not line them up in order of age if I try, if I want it to. <laughs> so don't worry about that. <laughs> I have to inter interrupt Interfere and tell you that Tamara is on Facebook and she put in a comment that says, I'm not a spring chicken. And I want to tell you that I've never felt so connected to a group of people and instructors like AWAI. It feels like I'm earning a graduate degree with all the learning and implementation that we are given. I love you so much. Thank you so much for saying that. You just made my whole day. <laughs> That's yeah, we awesome. Good job. The best people. And like I said, like the, this is just like one little taste of the community. Like the communities that we have and create is just on another level. And I mean, Russ, I got to say, we have so much fun in that Facebook. <laughs> Maybe too much fun as well. It's just, it is the best time ever. Yeah, um, I, I think it's important to say, like, you know, we like to have fun on these calls. Yeah. In the horse run and get our, in, in, and learn some cool stuff. But, you know, you know, we have fun too. Yeah, we do. And and we have some fun students and they, you know, so it's, it's not all just, uh, I'm not going to just stand up here and lecture for the whole time. It, we do, we do have fun uh, in these classes. And Russ does give you extra points on your final assignment. If you laugh at his bad jokes, just so yeah. everybody knows. Absolutely. Yeah. I, exactly. Like Zoom takes care of that. It just keeps a tally <laughs> whether you're laughing at my jokes or not. So Okay, so Rebecca, I see you uh, marked a question that would you, you would like answered. Um, Russ, you know, a lot of the companies that you shared today were like Lowe's, big deal, big companies, right? Does this, this content also apply for like smaller companies and solo businesses? And can you give some examples of how it applies for, for smaller companies? Yeah, so I call content, is, it's the great leveler of the playing field, okay? So like you don't need to be, you don't need to be a Fortune 500 company to create content. That's what's so beautiful about it is, is that, you know, when the, what the internet has done, if you think about it, is, is, is democratize the, the production and distribution of information. So it doesn't matter how big or small you are, uh, you can publish today. You know, remember back before the internet, it was like everything was consolidated into a few people's hands. And, and that's where we got our information from, in, you know, from large media companies. Well, today, even the smallest business has access to the ability to publish. And like I said, if this isn't, this isn't a big or small, this is a business thing. This isn't a B2B or B2C thing. This is a every business thing. It, you know, all businesses need this. And yeah, I understand. And the reason that I use recognizable brands like that is because we all recognize them. They're easy for you to understand like, oh, that's Lowe's, that's Home Depot, that's uh, REI. So, um, but yeah, just as many examples in, in the small business world. One of the examples we look at extensively in the class is, a, is from a, a small heating and cooling company that's doing a really great job with content marketing. 
and just helping people make informed buying decisions uh, about their heating and cooling units and, you know, their, their house really. Um, so uh, it's, it's not, it has nothing to do with business size. I mean, Russ, you, I'm, I'm trying to frame up this question <laughs> with knowing what we cover. I mean, you talk about, you know, problem solution, but you really do talk about multiple marketing solutions across the board and ways to approach and fix problems that clients are having. I mean, because when we talk about content, I mean, how many pieces of content in the beginning do we like reference to? It's got to be about in the first 50? section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Several dozen. You yeah. Know, just, <laughs> what I want to do is in that first session, I just want you to you'll all of a sudden be like, oh my God, like there's content all around me and it, and it has business purpose around it. And I want to show you what those business purposes are. And, and really, you know, when you get into this class, the very first video you'll see from me, which is sitting in there waiting for you right now is, is going to show you some content that you'll be like, huh? Yeah, I do see the business value in that. And that I could absolutely write that. Um, and, and, you know, it's a very big mind shift that I want you to, to make, which is uh, a simple one is that I want you to start looking at content differently online and start to start to understand why it was produced. You know, why was that thing? Why does somebody take the energy to produce that content? Why did they spend money on it? And you'll notice that there's about six different reasons, exactly six different reasons that map back to the production of content. And they're all, all of those reasons are uh, connected back to growing a business. So, you know, if businesses want, to, want more people to be aware that they exist, there are particular types of content that we can produce for that to help with that. That's what I mean by prescribe. So if you have a client that's sitting there saying like, no one knows we exist, your ears will, will learn to prick up on that, right? I'm going to teach you how to like, listen for those kind of comments. No one knows what our business, that our businesses even exists. Well, you're going to know right then you're going to, you're going to start to realize what's bothering them. Like what, what symptom, what that symptom means and diagnose and prescribe the right piece of content and then go write it, send an invoice and get, get paid. So um, yeah, that's, that's the whole fundamental part of this class is that there are certain kinds of content that solve different, certain kinds of business problems. They don't all do the same thing. And I'm going to teach you how to recognize that and start to see that online everywhere in the first session. And then we're going to just start going through each symptom. Like, okay, now you got a business owner sitting in front of you that says we need more uh, leads. Like we don't have enough people to, to, for our sales team to talk to. Cool. Like I'm, I understand your problem. Let me write your prescription. Right. Or I, we can't keep the customers we have. We have a bunch of customers. It's great. But they keep canceling all the time. Okay, good. You know, let me write your prescription for that, right? <laughs> and and each time, what you're prescribing is content, but it it's going to be various different forms of content that that we'll learn about. Okay, Linda said, "Fantastic course," and Russ is the best instructor. I tell you, how big is your ego going to be when you get off this call? All these comments. <laughs> want me to send them to you afterwards? I'll screenshot them. <laughs> Well, I'll um, tell you, I, I did, you know, this is brand new material from me. I've taught content marketing before, um, but, you know, again, with the, with the things that have changed over the last uh, year, this course is brand, it's, it's, this is all new material. And so we've even had a lot of people that have taken my prior courses that, that uh, have asked, like, how is it different from some of my other stuff? Well, this is, uh, this is all new material for me and it's absolutely 100% geared for the person doing the writing uh, which hasn't been the case in a lot of the other courses that I've produced. Um, I have to tell you guys Anita says that this is one of the most engaging sessions that she's attended in the last six to eight months so good job. Um, there were a few questions about what day it starts in timing. Do you want me to take this one? Yeah go ahead and actually guys we're gonna do a last call looks like we're closing out. Okay. Do you have another question? Definitely post it now and we'll try to close out the next five minutes. Okay. So we, we go twice a week. Usually we're starting actually on Thursday, um, July 1st, skipping the fifth.
and then going then Thursday and Monday <laughs> for nine sessions total. It's a lot to remember, but just remember that we start on July 1st. <laughs> And, and then you're on our website right now, right? So when they exactly. do sign up and stuff to, to do right now? Yes. So when you get there, there is um, a welcome video from Russ. There's a session to get started to frame you up right away about productizing that Russ was mentioning. So how to set up your copywriting business. Um, and don't you feel like Russ it also just shifts your entire mindset on client, being a copywriter or a content writer or freelancer, right? Like, this is something that took me like eight years to figure out. And then I, and you're going to learn it. You're going to learn it in uh, how long is that video? I think it's about 45 30 minutes. minutes, 30, 45 minutes. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah. the gold, you can join that Facebook group right away. And let's just get the gifts rolling right now and um, get to know everybody before class begins on the first. Yeah, uh, Chris said, this training has reconfirmed my decision to be a content writer. I love that, Chris. The course is great. Lots of detail. Great resources. Very timely content. Challenging work. Open my eyes to the opportunity. Russ is a great teacher. Thanks, Betsy. Um, okay, so for, for this year, we can confidently say that this is the last time that we're running the content certification, I believe. Um from what we've got planned right now. So um, that was for Carla. Um, the Facebook group, Elias, is prime, is only once you are a, a member of the group. So you'll get the link straight away as soon as you sign up there. The Facebook um, group is almost like the classroom. So, and the classroom happens to be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So once you get into the certification, you're kind of moved into that classroom space. And so there's the instruction where you actually go to the classroom to work with Russ and get your lessons. Maybe think of it more like the lab and the office hours is the Facebook group where everybody is in there and, and answering each other's questions and Russ is in there. But that's part of the certification experience that you'll, you'll get. This is going to sound like I'm setting you up and it's a fake question, but I promise it's real. <laughs> Dell is asking if, if they enjoy writing um, articles as a hobby right now, how suitable would this class be for them? Well, I mean, listen, I love to write too uh, for a hobby, but if you want to turn it into, uh, if you want to turn this into, you know, a business and create a, a a living from something you enjoy, then take the class because I'm going to show you how to do it. <laughs> I mean, it's this, you're going to learn how to take what you love to do in your, in your spare time and turn it into a business. And, and, um, it's, it, it it's a pretty step-by-step -step process that I'll show you and show you how to go out and get, get the clients and, and do all that stuff. So, um, I think, you know, I can remember my dad telling me a long time ago that you should love what you do every day when you're working. And if you like to write and you like that freedom that you get from it, then let me show you how to build a business around it um, so that you can love what you do. <laughs> I love that. And I want to just note on Dell, I have a look at the full question. She's also doing our sales letter certification. And the part about the articles is that she loves to research things. And that's why she loves to write articles. And I want to say, Dell, everything, I answered a few other questions, everything at the core is research. Like curiosity is key when it comes to any form of writing, guys. Please waste the first ways of sales letters, articles, blogs, anything in between. Being excited about something and curious and finding out if that's your natural tendency, you're in the right place. Because research, if you can research well, if you just are that person who wants to know one more question. Like you find yourself on Google and you find something you're like, oh, let me see about that thing. If you tend to go down rabbit holes, you're in the right spot because that's, you're basically in the world that everybody's in who's searching online for content. And so you're able to answer those questions. And the fact that you're doing sales letters now and then also because you're moving out of content, remember, like our other friend at the beginning, you'll be able to cover the full spectrum, which is great as well. You'll, you'll apply what you've learned in direct response to your content and you'll be writing content that sets people up for your direct response. So you're definitely on the right track. So I'm, I'm really excited for you. I think you should definitely proceed. And if you can swing this certification too, to do them back to back, I think it would be great. I Not see uh, saying, are we offering a special deal? We are. So they should have the, it's awi.com forward slash the leap. 
Um, and we haven't really started promoting it yet. So it's there. You can sign up for it now. Uh, Circle of Success members, there is another deal for you on your member page. So don't go to that leap. Go to your member page and you'll find your special deal as well. Circle of Success and Infinity. You have no idea what those groups are. They are just our highest level of learning. They've committed and gone all in. And so they have different arrangements, uh, different discounts for things that we offer through live training. But there is a special deal right now. It is through the leap. Um, I'll make sure you guys get that URL after this as well. Uh, definitely sign up though, because you can, if you could, if you sign up now, even though they don't start to July 1st, you have time. You can go through the materials that Russ has already posted on the member page, get involved in the Facebook group, start asking questions, start thinking about my homework assignment for you signing up today is to start thinking about the areas you might like to write in. The cool thing about content is you don't have to specialize. If you're curious and a good researcher, you can really write about anything, you know, whether I'm writing about interview questions for managers or the best infant safety products for new moms, it doesn't matter. I can figure out the answers for it. So don't worry, but, but start thinking about that. Like, what are the kind of things you'd like to write about? What are those hobbies that you have? What experience do you have background? What's something that you would be like Russ said, so happy just to be reading about all the time. If you're happy to read about it, you'll probably be happy to write about it and get paid for it at the same time. So that's what I would, that's my homework for you. For those of you signing up today while you're preparing for the certification that kicks off on July 1st. And we have a sign up. I think it was, uh, there's a people, I think it's Robert who said that he's signing up. So looking Excellent. forward to seeing you in the Facebook group in the class, Robert. That's so exciting. Excellent. Okay. All right, guys, closing words, rest from you. Well, yeah, I, I would say, you know, if you're looking to make a, a change in any way, advance your career, um, you know, start a, start a business. This, this is a, a pretty special time we're living through right now. The pandemic created a lot of grief, uh, for sure. But, you know, we, we've looked at what's, what's been the results of that. It, it, we've seen a ton of growth on the digital side. There's just a ton of demand out here. Um, and so this is, you know, take, take the leap because of the <laughs> leap, you know, because it's, it's, it really is. It's, it's a, it's just a great time to get into digital marketing. The pool is wide open, uh, for people that want to create content for brands, you know, help people make informed bu buying decisions. It's a really great way to spend your day. Um, and I would love to teach you about it. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you, Russ, so much for being here. Thank you, Jade, for the Q&A. And guys, if nothing else that you take away from the session, just know that you are at the best time in the history of the world to be a writer. There's never been more demand. It's growing faster, not only just because of people going online, but because of all the channels Russ was talking about, because of all the vehicles, because of all the ways we can disseminate ideas and content these days. No matter what path you take, take some path. You're in the right space. This is the right time. There's never been a better time and it's just getting bigger and better. So good luck. Congratulations to you. And I look forward to seeing you guys on a future session in the near future. Bye everyone. All right. Thanks.